Recording has started. Good afternoon and welcome everyone to the final presentation for the 2020-2021 Livestock Research Unit powered by New Holland. My name is Alex Trotman and I am from Downey, Saskatchewan and I got the pleasure of being this year's general manager. Our unit this year is made up of eight students ranging from Alberta and Saskatchewan and this is the fifth year for the Livestock Research Unit. Our team vision is that our unit strives to sustainably manage an extensive, low maintenance, strong maternal cow herd with vast amounts of information regarding the animal's background data, breed composition, and management system data. We can use this information to apply to larger scale, low input operations to improve management practices. Last year's team recommended to us to use the data from the garlic and fly trial, continue to obtain data on the herd, RFI data on the herd, conduct trials that provide valuable information to producers, make a calendar in September to plan out the semester, and conti continue to look for an RFI tested bull. Our accomplishments this year align directly with some of the recommendations from last year's team. We created a calendar in September for the year based off our SOPs. We conducted the RFI trial on 15 replacement heifers, sampled two different styles of bale grazing, created a branding demo on our replacement heifers, and we recently purchased a two-year-old bull for the upcoming breeding season. Finally, we weaned our calves in January. Our goals for the year were to understand the purpose of the research herd, conduct industry beneficial research, create a smooth transition for next year's team, and model our, model our strategies after extensive management practices. Our SWOT analysis allows us to highlight our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. The threats we pinpointed this year the strengths we pinpointed this year were was our team's work ethic, unique management ideas, and industry involvement. Weaknesses we noticed was our communication, land base, and team direction. Although our team direction got clarified for us thanks to our faculty advisor, Marisa Schubel, for meeting with the deans of agriculture and research to provide an update, updated team vision for us in future years. Opportunities this year, we were, we were created our own research demo using our replacement heifers that will be touched on later in the presentation. We matched our herd to our grass availability, and we also are going to utilize uh, the Razor Grazer for our summer grazing plan, courtesy of Neil Thorstensen. Some threats to our team would be grass availability, environmental conditions, and COVID volatility. My name is Kyle Palgard. I'm the records and facilities coordinator. Um, as we're sitting at closing our semester, our inventory, we have one Hereford bull, one Angus bull that we purchased, and 73 cows with 15 replacement heifers. Uh, this year for records, uh, we use herd tracks for our records, and we added our health protocols. Um, this included adding all the different treatments as well as the vaccinations that we give our animals. And we updated our calving records as well as weights and body condition scores of our animals. Uh, we use Bix as well to put our calves RFID tags into. Uh, this way we can trace them to slaughter for better carcass data. Some of the key performance indicators this year. So our SMF herd, we, our growth rate, uh, they were 44% of the dam's weight at weaning. Um, we had an open rate of 8.6% and our length of calving season was 68 days with our death loss being 1.4%. Hello, my name is Leah Oswald and I am this year's health coordinator as well as trial coordinator. This semester, we gave pre-calving vaccinations to our mature cows and bred heifers. On March 3rd, we administered ScourGuard as well as UltraBac 7 with Somniabac to our cows and ScourGuard to our bred heifers. On March 23rd, we gave our bred heifers a booster of ScourGuard and UltraBac 7 with Somniabac. In addition to this, we also treated the entire herd with Ivamec since we noticed many bald patches of hair on several animals. On April 8th, we did an additional treatment of Ivamec on the entire herd once again.
Recently, we pulled out a handful of cows to get their hooves trimmed, and it was concluded that they had laminitis and some of the cows had digital dermatitis. We came to the conclusion to call these animals. We also treated a calf for what we suspected was pneumonia. The first treatment it was given was Medicam and Biomycin on March 24th, and then a treatment of Resflor on March 29th. This year, we put 15 of our bred heifers on an RFI trial. RFI stands for residual feed intake and is a measurement of the animal's feed efficiency. We began the trial on February 10th, and it is still ongoing due to the fact that we decided to utilize straw as bedding rather than wood chips, since we didn't think that wood chips would provide enough insulation during extremely cold weather. Although bedding with straw required us to add an additional two days to the trial each time the heifers were bedded. The reason behind this is because the heifers could eat some of the straw in the 24 hours after bedding, which would change the results of the trial, and in the end, it would not be as accurate. We estimate that the trial will be done on the 21st of April, which comes down to an additional 20 days added on to the total trial period. This year, we also conducted a branding demo. We asked the underlying question. We recorded weights from day zero, day one, and day seven to analyze how the branding procedure affected the animal's feed intake. We found that the branded animals gained a combined average of 10 pounds, the animals treated with meloxicam gained a combined average of 19.2 pounds, and the control animals gained a combined average of 18.4 pounds. In addition, the gross safe beef system allowed us to analyze the average daily gain of the heifers. The branded animals had a combined average daily gain of 0 0.542 kilograms, the animals treated with meloxicam had a combined average daily gain of 0 0.68 kilograms, and the controlled animals had a combined average daily gain of 0 0.668 kilograms. We understand that these numbers aren't statistic statistically significant, but they are numerically different. On April 8th, we analyzed the average daily gain of the heifers. The ones that were branded averaged out at 2 pounds, and the heifers that were treated with meloxicam averaged out at 2.4 pounds. So it is safe to say that the heifers have increased performance since the branding procedure. When taking a look at the data recorded, we concluded that the animals that were branded and treated with meloxicam performed the best out of the three groups and therefore reflected positive animal welfare. Hello, my name is Michaela Sattler and I am this year's reproductionist and nutritionist. Our cows started their extensive bale grazing system on February 3rd. This consists of our cattle grazing on LC15 with a bale ratio of being 13 hay and 8 green feed, while also being supplemented a winter mineral of 1544. Bales are placed out every seven days in locations around LC16 that are in need of litter control. This practice comes out to $3.30 a head per day. Our costs include the farm team placing out bales for two hours, cutting net wrap, and the cost of feed. As for our last semester, we did a bale grazing intensive system where we created 10 paddocks in LC 15 and 16 with a bale ratio and moved our cow-calf pairs into each paddock every four days. This practice came out to $3 a pair a day. Our RFI heifers started their weaned ration diet on January 20th, which consisted of 11 pounds of 75% hay and 25% pea straw as a tub grind mixture, and 2 pounds of rolled barley grain. This cost 81 cents per head per day. The heifers stayed on this ration for 8 days. Since we did a later weeding, our heifers have already created a rumen development through the green feed, hay, and corn grazing. We didn't want to burn up the rumen, so we created a background step-up ration. On January 28th, the heifer's ration was switched to their current ration they are on, except we gradually bumped up their grain consumption to one pound each week to help eliminate acidosis and bloat. 
The heifers started their trial on February 10th and will stay on this ration until April 21st. The ration consists of 6.2 pounds of a tub grind mixture, 9.5 pounds of corn silage, 9.5 pounds of barley silage, 4.8 pounds of rolled barley grain, and 1 pound of 3620 beef supplement. This comes out to $2.01 per head per day. Cowboys predicted their average daily gain to be 1.7, but they are gaining 2.17 pounds per day, as they are receiving 440 pounds of a ration, which is 29.3 pounds per head in an ab lib feeding style. As a team, we would like to thank Wayne Stetson for the opportunity to add quality genetics to our herd as we purchase a two-year-old Black Angus. Allendale 50G will be used for our breeding season this summer. As for the other bull, we would like to thank the commercial SMF team for allowing us to rent Lewis 3005D for our breeding program once again. Our breeding groups are based on two compositions, to keep the 80% Angus and the 20% Hereford, as we will be carrying out with two breeding groups this summer. Our bulls will be turned out on July 22nd and removed September 23rd, stating this to be a 63-day breeding period. The two Angus bulls will be exposed to 43 mature cows and five replacement heifers, while our Hereford bull will be exposed to 20 mature cows. This will set our calving period to start May 1st of 2022. Hi, my name is Shaylin Walls and I'm this year's range and forage coordinator. On December 26, our cows began corn grazing. We had estimated to get 14 days on the corn, however, we ended up getting 16. The cornfield was split into three paddocks and they were moved every three and a half to four days. The cost for corn grazing were $76 an acre for corn seed, $60 an acre for fertilizer, $30 an acre for herbicide and another 30 for custom seeding and fertilizing, $7 an acre for custom spraying, and $65 an acre for rent. This being a total of $2,412, which comes to a projected price of $1.08 per head per day and $2.16 per pair per day. This past year, some of our pastures were overgrazed and are proceeding to become poor quality. Improving our pasture management will greatly benefit the land, giving it time to recover and grow back to its full potential. This is our current proposal. Our goal is to improve our pasture management to help utilize the land efficiently and improve the quality of the pastures in order to increase stocking rates in years to come. By doing this, it will help extend our grazing days, help with moisture management to help stockpile grass for future years, Grazing in smaller areas allows all the forages to be utilized and helps to completely avoid overgrazing the land. In order to over, avoid overgrazing, you need to let the land rest for 80 days after it has begun to regrow a bud. Due to already having a shortage of land, we will need to feed some bales over the summer. However, this is not necessarily a bad thing as it will help add litter, nutrients, and organic matter back into the land. We've decided to do a planned grazing system. This ensures that the pastures will not be overgrazed and help extend our grazing days. To avoid continuous grazing and walking over grass we go to get to water, we've decided to put in a permanent electric fence to create an alleyway. This alleyway will be used as a sacrifice land versus them walking back over the paddocks that they have already grazed. This alleyway will go through LCP 22 and 23, making it easily accessible to get to water from any paddock they are in. This can take them to the corrals for water if there's not enough water in the low areas, throughout the pasture or the chute if needed. This way all the other areas can be separated with an electric fence using the razor grazer. This gives you control over what the cattle are grazing and can completely avoid overgrazing by moving them into a new paddock before the grass has begun to grow in the current paddock. By gaining control of what the cattle are grazing, you can somewhat force them to eat the more undesirable forages like around buff brush, bluffs of trees, or sloughs. This way you are utilizing the whole pasture and not wasting or leaving behind any forage. We've decided that it will be easiest for farm staff, yet the most efficient for the land, to be moving paddocks every seven days. Not every paddock will be exactly seven days, and once they are on LCP 24, they will be grazing for about 12 days and will need to be fed bales for five days due to shortage of grass availability. They will be out on the three pastures from April 28th to September 23rd. Material costs for this will come to a total of $1,463. 
This includes the supplies needed to build a permanent electric fence for the summer, labor costs, which include building the permanent fence and pasture moves over the summer will come to a total of $863.58. We would like to thank Range Ward for the use of their Razor Grazer as a loan demo this summer, which helps immensely with our fencing costs. The total cost for this summer will be $2,326.58. By doing this economically, we are creating more grazing days on the land availability that we have, and this will save us from having to possibly buy land in the future to not having enough grazing days or land availability or risking having to feed bales over the summer. Over a five year period, adding a little bit of extra labor over the summers and some extra fencing in the first year can decrease cow day costs by having a higher carrying capacity per acre and also create some stockpiled grass for future years to come. Hello and good afternoon. My name is Cheyenne Gates and I am this year's mixed farm coordinator. The mixed farm team is made up of the farm team, faculty, crops, and livestock. This semester, we have finished mapping and moved on to our next major project, which is the environmental farm plan. Some of the other things that we have worked on this semester was making sure our summer plans were ready to pass on to the staff for our summer care of our animals. We also had, dis had discussed conflicts and concerns that always was present and the livestock division discussed how we would go about doing soil samples for our pastures with the mixed farm team and how it would be beneficial for us. One of our major conflicts we had this semester was a straw versus manure cost. We spent hours discussing this and one of our breaking points in understanding this conflict was when our farm manager put all of the little pieces together. When we look at manure, manure is about $36,000 each time and it has to be dumped about twice a year and that does not include labor. We were given an option as to we could sell it for a profit or we could lower the cost for our crops and their fertilizer. When it comes to straw, Central Feeds buys the straw and sells based on local markets and labor costs. By taking straw off of our fields, we risk having nutrient issues and other issues with the crop itself. But we are putting nutrients back on with the manure, however. The other option was we could also do some kind of custom bailing and advertise the school's name as well as the New Holland name. However, in conclusion, we determined the cheapest option for the farm in the future was to keep everything the same for now. Hi, my name is Lucy Brokman and I am the finance and marketing coordinator. For both the income and expense displays, the blue will represent how much we have been budgeted and orange will represent how much we have spent. We would like to say thank you to CG Polgard Farms LTD for buying our calves for a good price. This visual shows so that we have made more of an income on both our steers and our heifers than what the team has previously predicted because we as a team have decided to to sell our calves privately rather than selling to the auction mart. Our income has also increased for our call cows because we made the decision of calling the herd a bit harder this year for bad feet and low milking ability. Unfortunately, we were not able to select heifers for the roundup sale. Therefore, we have decided against putting bred heifers into the sale this year. We have been budgeted a total of $95,500 by the previous team and have currently made a total income of $112,295.18. Please note I have separated these two graphs for visual purposes as both feed expense and bull purchase are our highest expenses. Some of our expenses have been higher than we have predicted. For example, our feed cost is higher due to letting the cattle graze on hay and green feed, as Michaela has mentioned earlier. We have started out with more than $60,000 and have currently spent more than $65,000. Other expenses are well below what we have been budgeted for. 
Expenses such as sale deductions, selling our calves privately saved us uh, money, making the budget for this much lower than what has been predicted. We have started out with a budget of $28,000 and have currently spent $164.03. We have predi been predicted to spend $97,048.13 and have currently spent $88,376.19. I have also made a budget for the research SMF team for 2021 and 2022. You'll be able to find this information in the booklet provided. By inserting our herd size, the number of head we have sold, breeding, feed costs for over the winter, corn grazing and pasture, and our health costs, we have made a cost of production for our herd this year. From the cost to produce a pound of a calf, we have gained $2.41. From the from the return per pound of a calf, we have made $2.19. The loss per pound of a calf, we have lost $0.22. Cents. Profit per cow, we made $1,087.77. The loss for the herd, we have lost $7,011.67. We have been predicted a loss in our herd this year based on our cost of production. For a more detailed version of our team's cost of production, please reference the booklet provided. Although we are in a loss this year, our team has made a total net income of $23,515.89. For the finance side, we have decided to wean the calves and sell them off the same day. As mentioned earlier, we have uh, decided to wean the calves in January as market prices were better and we have more pounds on the calves to sell. At the time of sale, the calves were approximately 230 days old instead of the traditional 105 days. As mentioned a few minutes ago, we have decided to sell privately to CG Polgard Farms LTD. We have sold 39 steers with at an average rate of 640 pounds for a sale price of $2.05 per pound. We also sold 13 heifers at the average weight of 582 pounds for a sale price of $1.85 per pound. Both steers and heifers were sold with a five cent slide. Hello, my name is Kristen Taves and I am this year's Public Relations Coordinator as well as the Secretary and Alternative Representative. This year on Facebook, we had 604 likes as of September 1st and as of April 10th, we had 676 likes. Our most liked post first semester is seen on your left. It had reached 5,742 people, had 256 reactions and had a total of 233 likes. Our most liked post in second semester is seen on your right. It reached 2,827 people, had 189 reactions and had a total of 169 likes. This year, we also had three sponsors, including Regina View Farms Incorporated, DNN Livestock, and Cowtown Regina. We would also like to thank Crooked Arrow Company for their leatherwork and hats, as well as F5 Embroidery for all of our embroidery needs. This year as a team, we have also made an infographic on our branding demo, which will be displayed in the Research Center. Make sure you check it out. These are the recommendations for next year's team. We recommend to continue to gather RF data on the herd, possibly buy a new Hereford bull for the next breeding season, sell your calf crop privately, wean based on break-evens, body condition score, and feed availability, explore different options for parasite control, and continue to use Microsoft Teams for organization. At this time, we would like to thank everyone so far for their support, including New Holland, Marisa Schubel, Brayden Lewis, Bailey Halouche, the rest of the farm team, as well as all of our sponsors. This concludes our final presentation and the floor is now open for questions.
for is, um, for your pasture management, um, could you inc have you thought of increasing the amount of grass by sod seeding, uh, grazable alfalfa or some sapling? So the question is, um, if we have considered uh, seeding in different uh, grasses for uh, pasture management, um, I'd like to call on Shailen Walls to answer the question for you. Yeah, so um, later in the presentation, it'll be talked about by another one of the range and forage coordinators, but um, we haven't decided to for this pasture in particular. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Um, the next question, uh, Bill Strootman, please. Uh, yeah, I just got a question about the uh, alleyways in your pastures. Uh, I'm just wondering how many acres that uh, they took out of the grazing, and do you think the extra um, production from the pastures or the paddocks that aren't getting traveled on will make up for the acres that are taken out of uh, out of production for the alleyways? Yes, again, I'd like to call on Shailen Walls to answer that question. Yeah, so the alleyways won't be more than 12 feet wide, so it won't take up too much pasture land. And this way, we won't be going over any more grass again, and it won't be, um, I guess it, we're using it as the sacrifice land so that that's the only area that will be continuously walked on or drove on if they need to take truck and trailer out or anything. Um, does that answer your question? Well, I was just uh, curious. I think that one paddock was like 97 acres and you had, uh, or one field was 97 acres and you had nine paddocks in it. So do you think you would maybe had one acre or two acres in the in the alleyway or do you have any idea? I know it's narrow. It's it, I just wondered if you calculated out how much space you had taken out compared to the rest of the paddocks that are still going to be grazed. Um, I don't know exactly how many acres it will be in the alleyway, but it shouldn't be enough to affect too much of their grazing. Okay, that sounds good, thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, next question, Melissa Hall, please. Hi all, um, I was just wondering in your um, vaccinations with the cow herd, if you included any um, pre-breeding or breeding viral bacterial vaccinations? Yes, so the question uh, was with our pre calving vaccinations, if we did any of those. Um, I'd like to call on Lee Oswald to answer that question, please. So the only um, pre calving vaccinations we gave this year were the ones mentioned. So that would be the Ultravaxin Mastomubac, and that's just for black leg prevention, as well as Scour Guard, which is just the prevention of scours, which will be passed on to the calf when it is born. Um, as for like, that's all we give, um, and that's according to the SOPs here at the college. Um, we will be giving um, pre-breeding vaccinations though in June to the cow herd. Does that answer your question? Yes, so previously they have not been done with pre-breeding. This will be the first year that it's implemented. They have been done with it in the past, um, a little bit earlier since we are, but we begin breeding in July this year. So this, that's when their um, vaccinations will be given. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Josie Van Lent, uh, what is your question, please? Sure, thanks everybody. Um, first of all, great job presenting. Um, research team, super good job. I just have a, a question about um, your corn grazing, and I think your bill grazing costs um, in terms of the pairs. So is that a cow and a calf? And then I noticed that the, um, like the costs were doubled when you went from a cow to a cow-calf pair. And I just don't think that, you know, that that the calf would consume what the cow consumes. So I'm, I'm just wondering if that's costed out correctly or if maybe I'm misunderstanding something. And then that may imp clearly will impact your budgets, right? Um, but anyway, appreciate uh, someone uh, answering that for me. Yeah, uh, I believe Shailen Walls uh, covered the corn grazing for us. Um, hopefully she can answer that question for you. Uh, Shailen, if you want to take that one. 
Yeah, so basically the a dollar and eight cents is for the cat or for a cow per day. And then we just doubled it just to show a projected cost of adding on the pairs. I guess does that like answer? Adding, yeah, sorry, adding the calf pair on adding the calf on, Shaylin? Yeah. Yeah. So you might want to revisit that because first of all, a dollar eight like is very much in line with what I hear from producers in this area around corn grazing. So super good to be able to benchmark that, right? Um, for farms in this area to be able to benchmark against what you're doing. And that's pretty common um, from what I'm hearing. But uh, you might want to revisit that cow-calf pair because I don't think that calf is going to consume what the cow will consume, right? Um, okay. So the cost should be quite a bit lower. But anyway, but overall, great job. And thank you so much for the information. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you everyone for your questions. Uh, this concludes our presentation. And uh, if there is any further questions for us, um, for people just joining, uh, please put them in the chat and one of us will get to them as the presentation goes on. But thank you for tuning in.